Peace, everyone. This is Kai Shane with the Mailman Muscle Channel. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, yes, I am a mailman. I'm 47 years old. I've been a power lifter for 15 years. And as of today, I'm about nine and a half weeks out from my first ever bodybuilding show. It'll be a natural drug tested uh, event with the OCB right here in my hometown of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, just wrapping up an upper body session. That is my first one back home since the Arnold. So come on in and uh, let's see how this thing worked out. Here we go. And yes, this is in black and white on purpose. You know, I was just watching Dorian Yates Blood and Guts and I was, you know, just feeling the black and white thing. And I was like, you know what? I wonder what some of my stuff would look like in black and white lifting a quarter to if I'm lucky a third of the amount of weight Dorian was lifting back when he was Mr. Olympia um, I'm just playing around with the visual so hopefully you guys uh, watch and like it uh, or don't dislike it too much anyway going with my new favorite back uh, exercise to kick things off which is the Smith Machine pin lay row pin lay rows are not something that I've typically done for back, at least as far as a hypertrophy uh, movement. However, I ran into this at Planet Fitness um, about a week ago, and here's what I realized. You can't make noise in Planet Fitness, so you're not supposed to in terms of like dropping weights. They don't want that kind of stuff. So the same way that I've handled deadlifts where, you know, I get them uh, gently to the ground after I've done a rep. I realize that if I do the same with these pin lays, you know, sort of catch it um, and control the negative on the way down, it really fires up your lats. That negative, that stretch, along with the explosion uh, coming up, uh, it's a much better lat exercise by being forced to control it on the way down. So I highly recommend it. If you guys would like me to do a video, um, one of my tutorials like I've done on other lifts on the pin lay row in the Smith machine, just leave that in the comments. I'll be happy to do it. Following that, obviously, here we are on a low incline bench press, warm ups, uh, three sets there. And this got followed up with two working sets, just like I did with the pin lay rows. Uh, I have been big on high intensity techniques. You know, one set that's a rest pause, sort of like DC training, or maybe a drop set. But as I'm closer to this contest, I've been trying to minimize my injury risk. And so what I've really adopted is essentially a two set protocol for bigger lifts, like compound lifts and then on maybe an isolation lift, I'll only do one set. Uh, I will do partial reps at the end of a set or something that you'll see me doing on this second work set with the bench is doing a negative after I know the set is over and that I can't get another rep. In, uh, in some cases, people may do forced reps, you know, where they have a training partner help them get uh, you know, a final rep or two after they are unable to complete any more reps on their own. I didn't want to do that. So what I decided to do once I realized, all right, this is it. I can't get another one. Let me just do a slow negative. I'm on a Smith machine. I'm not going to get pinned. So I just bring it down, uh, put it on the rack and keep it moving. But I get the benefit of that last uh, negative sort of as, as if I had done a forced rep. From there, going into these rear delts, I did do one warm-up set. Um, that that footage didn't come out so good. It was like shot from the floor. But And again, it was only a warm-up set, so what difference does it make? But this was the work set. And as you'll see here, the range of motion is going to get shorter as, as this set comes to an end. Uh, but instead of stopping, once I can't do a full range rep anymore. I'll just knock out a few partials, uh, try to squeeze everything I can out of this one set because I know this is all I'm doing directly for rear delts, um, which already got hit to some extent in those pin lay rows. 
After that, I just turned myself around on the same machine, hit this pec deck for another working set uh, for chest, which had already got hit with the um, incline bench. This also engages uh, the front of the delts a little bit. We'll get to those again uh, when this is all over. But pec deck, same idea with this as with the um, rear delt. Go until you can't get any more full range reps and then uh, just knock out partials. Try to squeeze as much as I can out of one set um, so I can try to keep the work rate and intensity up but minimize my risk of injury at the same time as I'm getting closer to the show. I'm more depleted so I need to make it to the stage. Way more, so I kept trying to shift to try to bring the left side in some. I think it's just maybe it's the arms. I don't know, but you'll have to do. I found this one under my leave no stone unturned uh, category. Shrugs. It's not something that I have done often. I mean, like over my whole training life, about 20 years, I really have not done a lot of shrugs. In most of my trap development, and I don't have impressive traps, at least I, I really don't think so. Most of my traps has come from just doing deadlifts and rows, and I just never bother with shrugs. But I also never put myself in a situation where uh, people are going to be judging my physique either. So shrugs are something I haven't been doing a whole lot of, but... It's a whole lot more than none. So that's what we're doing here. I actually ended up doing two work sets of them because uh, I didn't think or feel like I'd hit the traps a whole lot with those Penley rows. They may get some minor um, stimulation from them, but this really hit them directly. With shrugs, they have such a short range of motion. I think it's especially important that you control the negative on those and uh, make sure you get a good squeeze on those at the top you don't have a lot of room to work with which also means you don't have much room for error in terms of how to execute the rep last thing were Arnold's Arnold presses and you know I was actually happy with these and here's why I've been using strength performance in the gym as a proxy for how much muscle I'm holding on to. I know it's not a direct correlation, but I think there has to be some tie to how much muscle you have relative to how much weight you're moving. So the last time I did this exercise was about a week and a half before the video that you're watching. And in that video, I did, I used 65 pound dumbbells and I think I did nine, 10 reps with those. But that was the first exercise that I did. So now here, I'm using 60 pound dumbbells. So five pounds less per hand, 10 pounds less altogether. But I got nine reps with that at the end of the workout, last exercise. So to me, I, I took that as a big win that uh, and a big sign, hopefully, that while I'm dropping fat, I'm holding on to as much muscle as possible. I'm not saying I'm holding on to all of it, but I want to hold on to as much as I can, obviously, um, because that's what this is all about. That's what bodybuilding, dieting is about. But even if you're not trying to do a contest somewhere, I'm sure everybody wants to build muscle and drop fat or hold muscle and drop fat. One of those two. So this is where we end. I'm going to have uh, a few parting words and we'll go back to color as my wife trying to make sure I don't kill myself. Thank you, dear. Folks, that's it. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Make sure that you do all the YouTube things right now. Click the like button. Click the subscribe button, notification bell, share this video, and leave a comment. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.